All right, good afternoon and welcome back to our Wednesday webinar series, Meet the Colleges, Conversations with FRAC, Florida Regional Admissions Counselors. My name is Kathy Hart. I'm an educational consultant with Score at the Top Learning Centers and Schools, and I am the moderator for this series. Um, in our handout section in the GoToWebinar control panel, you can find some information from provided by us, score at the top. Um, if you'd like to check out what we've provided, you can click on plus next to the handouts and you can download uh, whatever you would like to read and do enjoy. And as always, in case you encounter any audio difficulties uh, during the presentation, just click on plus next to the audio section on the Explorer and just follow directions to dial into the webinar. As always, we will send a link to the recording and our webinars are available for your convenience, for your viewing 24 seven at scorewebinars.com. All right, so let's get started. Tonight is our fifth and final session with BRAC. Um, it's been a really great series. I've had so much fun hosting and moderating. Um, and tonight we're gonna finish our conversations talking about the liberal arts, how it's lucrative, lasting learning. Um, and on the panelists tonight, we have representatives from Barry, Bucknell, Muhlenberg, and Sacred Heart, our guest from Seton Hall, unfortunately could not make it this evening. Um, for our audience members, if this is your first, uh, first time with us, if you haven't watched our previous webinars, um, if you're unfamiliar with, with uh, who, what FRAC is. So FRAC is Florida Regional Admissions Counselors. It's an organization comprised of college admissions representatives who live and work in the state of Florida, but who represent out-of-state colleges. Um, so they serve as a wonderful resource for our Florida high school students and their counselors to find out more about higher education opportunities outside of the state. Um, to see a complete member list of schools, there are more than 20, as well as names of representatives and contact information, um, please check out their website, wearefrac.org. Um, also too, you can go back and view our previous webinars, um, our very first one, all the way back, beginning of the month. Um, we featured 16 members who each gave a brief overview of their schools. It was an excellent kickoff to the series. Um, also too, students, if you're interested in being put in touch with a admissions counselor, um, you should, um, on the uh, email that we sent for the reminder for this week's webinar, as well as for um, when we send out the recording link, we will also include a link to the inquiry form. So if you would like to be put in touch with a member of FRAC, please go ahead and fill that out and they'll be more than happy to chat with you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our presenters. Um, all of whom were with us on our very first um, event and who thank you for coming back for our final one. So we've got Laura Miller has worked for Berry College 12 years is an, and is also a graduate of Berry College. She notes that a more interesting fact may be that she's the mother of nine children, seven of whom have attended Berry. This gives her a unique perspective on the college process as a mother who's gone through the process of admissions eight times. She travels the whole state of Florida and enjoys guiding young people and their parents to the final goal of finding that perfect place to spend four years. Welcome, Laura. Lauren Thank Rambo you. is is the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions and Southeastern Regional Rep at Bucknell University. She's been part of Bucknell's admissions team since graduating from there in 2012. Lauren resides in Tallahassee and works with students from all across the southeastern U.S. And she was also joined us for college case studies a few weeks back. Welcome, Lauren. Tara Nealon, the Re Regional Director of Admissions, Muhlenberg College and former college counselor, has nearly 20 years of experience in the college admissions profession. A true Floridian, Tara grew up in Jupiter and now resides in Tampa. 
She enjoys spending time outside. She serves on an event planning committee for an historic theater and aspires to one day be able to keep a garden. Welcome, Tara. And then we have Kim Perrett, is the Director of Regional Admissions at Sacred Heart University for the Southern Region of the United States and the Chairperson for the Florida Regional Admissions Counselors based in Northwest Florida. Kim has worked in higher education for in her entire career, both in admissions and student life roles. She enjoys meeting with and counseling students and families on the best college choice and fit for the student. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and before we begin our um, roundtable discussion on the liberal arts, um, our panelists are going to first of all share some information about their individual schools. Following their presentations, then we will come back in and we will have a really great discussion on the liberal arts, which I'm very excited to, to, learn, to learn about. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And also, let me just go ahead here. And then I'm going to turn it over to Laura from Ferry. Thank you, Laura. Hold on, let me see, am I there? Okay. Hi, uh, so happy y'all are all here today. It's hard to do these things when we don't get to see that person in front of us because I think that's what we're all about is that human connection. But we're doing the best we can and we really appreciate Kathy inviting us and you know, let's talk some more about college. Uh, I represent a school called Berry College. We're located in Rome, Georgia. We're northwest of Atlanta, one hour. So we're an hour from Chattanooga and an hour from uh, Atlanta. Uh, several unique things about Barry. We are Laura, the do you largest. Have I don't have any slides. Okay, good. I don't. I, I, I should because I feel like this college is something you really have to see to believe. But maybe I can just pique your interest and you'll look us up. Uh, we are located on the world's largest campus, 27,000 acres. What do you get with 27,000 acres? You get your own mountain, your own reservoir, dairy barns, equestrian barns, 88 miles of camping. Uh, uh, we have trails. Uh, we have uh, just the most amazing place. It's really kind of what I say, you know, we're kind of this hidden gem. Once you've seen our campus, you can't believe it. Uh, we have movies that have been filmed on campus. You may know some of them. Some are older, Sweet Home Alabama, Remember the Titans. Uh, recently, they just uh, filmed uh, the Netflix, oh, what is it called? I can't even think it's gone right out of my head, but the Netflix uh, show, and that's like I'm like going blank now. But anyway, they're all filmed right on campus and it makes for a really interesting environment. 2,000 students, 11 to 1 teacher-student ratio. Our students come from all over. Uh, we literally have uh, students from 48 different states. I live in Florida. I live in Atlantic Beach and I recruit all the students from Florida and we get an average of about 50 students a year from Florida. So there's quite a contingency from Florida. And uh, when they come to Barry, they're always really interested because there's more deer on campus than students. And, you know, it's a really different environment. And I always tell my Florida students that you don't give up your Florida citizenship, but you get to experience all four seasons you get to wear a sweater you get to wear jackets you get to uh, see a little snow occasionally uh, it's quite interesting uh, we do something very different at Barry. we combine a liberal arts education with a hands-on experience we spend six million dollars a year employing our students and you might say to yourself how does that work well we literally offer every single student eight semesters of paid professional development so that means that every student who comes to barry can also have a job while they're attending school and so I have students of my own. I have seven of my nine children have attended Barry, and their jobs have been in the range of uh, they've worked in the counseling office, 
They've worked in the Office of Institutional Research, the theater. Uh, I had a nursing major, a finance major. He ran the Office of uh, student, uh, Students with Disabilities. It's been quite an experience for me to see how my kids, my own personal kids, have come out on the other side and gotten jobs because of the work that they directly did at Berry College. This is also a paid position. So they actually graduate with a four year work resume. They can make up to $4,000 a year as a working student, but then they also have a four year work resume. And that's quite unique to graduate from college with the resume. So we do things a little bit differently at Barry. We have over 50 different majors. Some of our top majors are animal science. We have a 98% acceptance rate to med school. So thinking that you must go to that big state university to get into the medical school is just a fallacy. Uh, we do a really great job of that. Uh, we have our own preschool, elementary school, and middle school on campus. So if you're interested in education, uh, we have English, creative writing. Uh, the, the majors we have are all your normal majors, but then, you know, we do have creative technologies where you combine computer science, physics, and business together to, to have come out on top with this major that you're really just job ready when you come out of school. Uh, lots of scholarships, lots of money for students that are good students. We're looking for students in the top 10% of their class. We have just gone test optional this year. So we're gonna be really looking for that uh, student who can really show us that they've worked hard in high school and done a good job. And we just, are really looking forward to, to working with you in any way. We are open for visits, so you could actually come to see my campus. And I look forward to working with y'all individually. Great, thank you so much, Laura. And now we'll turn it over to Lauren Rambo from Bucknell University. Hey. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're so excited to have you and, and to talk about schools. Um, I'm going to talk about Bucknell quickly. Uh, like, wish, like Kathy shared, I went to Bucknell and then started working for Bucknell right away. So you can say I like it there. Uh, one of the things that I really love about um, my university is just the ways that we work with students to give you all of the experiences of a traditional liberal arts institution, which means making sure you have a well-rounded education, making sure we provide you breadth of interests, uh, critical thinking skills, communication skills, opportunities to try and explore and to learn about other cultures and other people uh, and other perspectives but that we also wanna make sure you walk away with some of those hands-on opportunities, chances to engage in service and in research as early as your first year, to study abroad, to have mentors in your professors. Um, our students are every day engaging in opportunities through our College of Arts and Sciences, our College of Management, and our College of Engineering. And all three of these schools work together. So regardless of what you end up wanting to study when you get to college. Bucknell is a place where you can continue exploring lots of different areas. Um, so in addition to having over 70 majors, um, sorry, 70 minors and, and 50 majors, you have 3,600 students. So we're on the smaller side, a nine to one student to ratio and zero classes taught by TAs. What that means is your professors actually get to know you. Uh, they know your name, they know things about you, they'll stop and ask how you're doing. Um, they will also give you a chance to um, get involved with their research projects or to guide you in the direction of projects that you might be interested in. They'll hear you say, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in this topic and they'll be able to point you to the next class that you can take, the next subject area that you didn't think about that could be a good fit for, for you. Uh, I think a 
back a lot to my first year experience and my first year advisor and, and telling him what I wanted to major in and that this was the path I was going to be on. And he stopped me and said, but have you tried other things? You only have so many opportunities in high school, use a little bit of college to explore other areas too. Our students are hands-on from day one. Um, we are one of the few undergraduate institutions with a true primate center. There's four different species of primates that our students interact with. We have things like maker spaces. Um, we have resources like our career or center for career advancement. There's three different theaters on campus. So there's a lot of different spaces that students can utilize. Our students are graduating typically within four years. We have a culture of graduating in four years and within nine months of graduating, 96% of a class will be placed. So we're really focused on making sure we get you to that next step. And our alumni are really involved in helping with that process as well and coming back to campus and saying, let me guide you on your journey. That supportive community extends to being on campus and your peers. Our students are ambitious and competitive with themselves. They're used to doing well in school. They have big dreams, but they're also collaborative and supportive with their peers. They want you to have the opportunity that you follow your dreams. They want you to follow your dreams. They want to ask what you're doing. They'll be running from class to class and activity and research project and job. Uh, but then stop and ask you how you're doing as well. So it, it's really a collaborative environment. Our students are engaging in both small class discussions and um, hands-on opportunities in places like our theater. We have three different theaters on campus, um, state-of-the-art lab spaces, including our rooftop greenhouse, that primate center that I mentioned before, um, places like our humanity center, which has a publishing house in it as well. So we're making sure you're getting a breadth of experience as well as a depth of experience. It's kind of unique that we also have engineering and management while being a liberal arts institution, having that pre-professional bent on top of liberal arts is something that's really important to Bucknell. No matter what you major in, you're going to get the best of both worlds. Our students are getting out of the classroom and into the world. Half of our students will study abroad. The vast majority participate in service as well, locally, nationally, and internationally. They live on campus and they're involved in over 150 different clubs and organizations. Uh, so it's really a place where you'll be doing a lot more than just going to class. You'll be participating in campus traditions. You'll be engaging with other students. Uh, maybe participating in Division I athletics or club sports and intramural sports, um, getting involved with the arts as well, getting involved with our local community. We're located in a small college town in a more rural setting, so your experience is really based on being in college and being at Bucknell. But the town is wonderful, really walkable, very residential, easy to get to, uh, and filled with community members who want to be a part of your experience too. We're looking at the whole student um, when you're applying to Bucknell. Uh, we do ask that you apply to one of our three colleges, but we allow you to be undecided in all three. And we also know that you might change your mind at some point, and that's okay too. Every piece of our application process matters, every piece of information you send us. We are test optional, um, so it's totally up to you if you want to submit your test scores or not. Uh, unless you're a recruited athlete, that's a separate process. Um, that you'll want to talk to your coach about, but otherwise it's up to you if you want to share that test score or not. We look at what you're involved in, who you are within your community, who you are within your school, who you are within your family, uh, to get a sense of who you might be when you get to Bucknell. We are on both the common application and the coalition application. We have three rounds of decisions uh, that students can choose from. Early decision one and two are both binding. If you're admitted, you're saying, yes, you'll attend, you'll definitely enroll. Um, it's about 30 to 40% of a class will come in through early decision one and two combined. And then most of our class comes in through regular decision. The vast majority of the aid that we offer is earmarked for need-based financial aid. And that's where the CSS profile which is this co the College Scholarship Service, um, that's due when your application is due, and that's for need-based aid. It's about half of our students receive Bucknell grants and scholarships, and about two-thirds overall receive aid of some form. And that's when you include things like, um, like work-study and loans. 
We have some merit scholarships that you apply for when you apply to Bucknell. You can apply for up to three, and those range from 2,500 to 30,000 a year. It's really a place where we want you to get as many experiences as possible. Uh, we don't want to say no, we want to say yes and, and to help you find a way to have all those different combinations. Uh, when I think about a quintessential Bucknell student, I think to one of our former uh, interns in the admissions office, who was a philosophy and political science double major, uh, who came in international relations and ended up changing his mind. Um, he was on the men's water polo team, also a part of outdoor education and leadership, worked in the admissions office, uh, and is currently at, at law school at USC. So there's no limit to the different ways you can get involved. Um, he also studied abroad, abroad in South Africa and was in a fraternity and, and just really embraced all of campus life. And that's something that we hope for for all of our students, that you take that chance to try new things, to discover new interests, uh, and to be engaged across our whole campus. Great. Thank you so much, Lauren. All right. And next, we'll turn it over to Tara Nealon from Muhlenberg College. Thank you. Are we good? Do you see my screen? Let's see. Um, no, I need to click a button. Okay. We're good? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I can see it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that confirmation. That makes me feel good. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Muhlenberg College. Like Lauren said, a hallmark of many small liberal arts schools, we are not limiting our students by any means. We are the yes end place. At Muhlenberg, we are dedicated to shaping creative, compassionate leaders through a rigorous academic program in the arts, the humanities, the social sciences, the natural sciences, we are committed to educating the whole student through experiences in and beyond the classroom, and these are hallmarks of liberal arts institutions. There we go. While these are the numbers at Muhlenberg, at Muhlenberg, our students are individuals who come together to form a community. Our students are supportive of one another, they are creative, they are curious, they are resilient, they are kind, they are good citizens. We are recognized in the rankings for best value, best food, best theater. We've earned gold for being green, an A plus grade from 538 poster ranking, and our students have been honored quite, quite a few times for their engagement in the local community. We do have Lutheran roots. One third of our students are Jewish and one third are Roman Catholic. Our athletes compete in the Division III Centennial Conference and have won more than 33 conference championships in 20 years, including football as conference champs the last two years. At Muhlenberg, we do academics, athletics, and the arts exceptionally well, and I invite you to visit us at muhlenberg.edu backslash visit. Well, this that you see here is an overhead view of our campus. You can tell we are in a suburban setting. We are 15 minutes to the totally awesome Lehigh Valley Airport. We are eight minutes to downtown Allentown. We are one hour north of Philadelphia, two hours west of New York City. Allentown is the third largest and fastest growing city in Pennsylvania. So come visit us in the Lehigh Valley. Our Lehigh Valley location lends itself to opportunities for our students to grow and learn and do outside of the classroom. We are, much like why I'm here tonight, a traditional liberal arts program. In a broad stroke, that means one third of our students' classes are within the major, one third in the liberal arts, and one third exploration. And that piece often leads to another major or a minor sometimes sometimes even in a pre-professional field of study or the pursuit of an academic partnership like that with Villanova's Law School or University of Pennsylvania's Dental School. Popular majors for first-year students include business, theater, biology, psychology. My favorite is undecided. Yes, we have public health. Growing in popularity also among our first-year applicants is neuroscience and computer science. Our dedication to the liberal arts sharpens a student's critical thinking skills, their writing skills, and ignites a passion for lifelong learning. And these are skills that employers seek in the best employees. 
The Muellenberg experience does lead to powerful outcomes. Our graduates go on to be change makers, teachers, scientists, actors, business owners, coaches, journalists, attorneys, physicians, leaders in their chosen field, and productive members of their community and their workplace. And they have lifelong access to the Career Center to assist when they change jobs. You will likely, in your lifespan, have 10 jobs or careers. So having the foundation of a liberal arts degree combined with the lifelong access to the Career Center puts you ahead of the rest. Our students are engaged in their work and are active in our community, supportive of each other, are intellectually curious, they're smart and good citizens, and gosh, they know how to have fun. Our faculty are incredibly committed to our students' growth and learning as individuals, as academics, and supportive of their pursuits. The level of care of our faculty is demonstrated, that's demonstrated with our students goes well beyond the classroom. It's very normal to see faculty members in the front row cheering their students on the field, in the theater, wherever they are. And oftentimes those mentorships go on for years beyond their time on campus together. We have been test score optional for over 20 years and all applicants for the rising seniors in the room, all applicants are considered for merit money. We do review applications holistically, much like Lauren explained, and that is also illustrated on the handout that you have access to in this webinar. Thank you, score at the top. When we read applications, our, our applicants do present with a rigorous curriculum like honors and AP classes. Our applicants use their application to speak to their passions, their interests, their talents, all of which demonstrate how they'll be a good fit within our community. My advice to you is to pick colleges that are the best fit for you socially, academically, financially. Be honest with yourself and have honest conversations with your family. Think about the qualities and characteristics that help you to be your best self and apply those to figure out where you can be your best self. And then when you get there, study what you're interested in. This will give you the most success and maximize your potential. Since 1848, we've been an institution of higher learning committed to our students and our community. And we look forward to welcoming you to campus when it is safe to do so. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Tara. And then we will now bring on Kim Perrett from Sacred Heart. All right, thank you. Let me show my screen here. Does that work? Yep, I can see it. <laughs> okay. All right, let me just do this and we'll get started. Okay, hey everybody. Um, my name is Kim Perrett. I'm with Sacred Heart. University in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, Fair, uh, sorry, Sacred Heart is a Roman Catholic university of about 5,400 students. Um, we are located about an hour outside of New York City and about two hours from Boston. So it's a really perfect suburban location, um, but yet near some great cities. So I want to start with an academic overview, and of course, I'm going to uh, talk mostly about our liberal arts program, since that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, we do have five colleges of study. One is the College of Arts and Sciences, where you're going to find um, most of the liberal arts majors. Um, but we also have a, a College of Education, Business and Technology, a College of Nursing, and Health Professions as well. And um, our core curriculum at Sacred Heart is based or rooted in the liberal arts. Um, that's um, what we started out um, as a liberal arts college back in the um, in the 60s. So we have 60 plus majors um, and obviously a still deciding major as well and 40 master's and doctoral programs, and many of these can be combined with your undergraduate major. So actually our graduate school is pretty large because a lot of students do take advantage of that opportunity. We also have um, a pretty small average class size, about 22 students, and our student-teacher ratio is 13 to one, so you get lots of that individualized attention in the classroom. 
Um, I wanted to, most of my slides are just uh, text, so I wanted to throw in some photos um, of some of our newest campus additions. Sacred Heart is in a growth mode, so we are growing and building um, every year, and these are some of our latest additions. We are the only um, university in New England with a diner, an actual old looking 50s diner um, with all the terribly bad foods, but also salads as well. Um, so our students love to hang out there and it's open till like 3 a.m. We have our um, radio station, uh, WSU, our Bobby Valentine Athletic and Creation Center, which just opened this past fall. We have actually a new campus and there's a photo of it there on the bottom. Um, it's our West Campus, and it's actually the former headquarters of General Electric, and it's about a mile from our camp, our main campus, but it's where our business and technology area is, really growing in those engineering fields. Um, we have many, many new residence halls, I think about eight. Um, some are still being built and will be finished uh, by spring of 2021. And along with our Black Box Theater at our university, we have purchased also the community theater. So we're able to put on shows actually in the, in the town of Fairfield. So um, aside from the liberal arts majors and other majors that we offer, I think one of the most important things, and, and the others have talked about this as well, is getting involved in extracurricular activities um, when you're in college. It's so important and it makes you a better student. And um, I know this for a fact because I was actually, I have worked in student life for many years. So at Sacred Heart, it's pretty easy to get involved. Um, with uh, kind of a medium-sized population. You can really explore different opportunities. Um, one of the things I want to mention on this slide, though, is our athletics program. We're a very school-spirited place, um, so if you don't play a sport, um, I hope you like sports because there's always some kind of activity going on athletic-wise. We have many Division One sports, club sports, intramural sports, um, also a lot of volunteer programs, uh, Sacred Heart is ranked number 13 in the nation for students who give back to the community, and that's something that's really important to us, um, along with our many campus ministry programs as well. Um, I just wanted to show a quick shot of uh, one of our residence hall lobbies. Our residence halls are quite beautiful, and uh, we do have a two-year residency requirement, um, but four years are certainly available if you'd like to live um, all four years on campus. Uh, we have many virtual tours available on our website, so please um, check us out um, because it's something great to see. For admissions at Sacred Heart, uh, we do use the Common App exclusively. We do need your high school transcript, uh, at least one letter of recommendation. We prefer an interview with admissions reps. Um, those are ongoing right now. We're doing virtual interviews. I just did one this morning. Um, we have been test optional for quite a few years now, so that's definitely still true. Our average GPA is about a 3.4, um, unless you're a nursing major, and then it would be a little bit higher. And um, for financial assistance, um, every student accepted at Sacred Heart will receive a merit scholarship based on their GPA. And we do have some other grants that are available uh, based on interest, audition, uh, band, choir, theater, dance. They're all listed here, community service. We have a biology-based uh, scholarship as well. And um, for additional financial aid, of course, for federal aid, you need the FAFSA. And for institutional aid, you'll need that CSS profile. And that is all I have for now, so we can move on. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll bring everyone back on. And then let me go ahead. I'm just going to briefly share my screen. Um, but oh, good. I can, I can see everyone as well, too. Um, all right, so, um, and I don't know if I see Laura. 
Laura wants to come back on. Um, all right. So um, one of one of the um, the well the main reason why we're here tonight, in addition to thank you all for sharing such great information about your schools, um, but also is to have a conversation about the liberal arts because I think you know so much. Um, and I, I attended a small liberal uh, small liberal arts college myself way back in the day. So I'm really <laughs> excited to talk about to talk about this kind of this field of learning and the opportunities that it does um, that that it does give students. So I thought first of all maybe we could we could begin the conversation by clearing up some of the misconceptions about what is liberal arts. And I think that's one of the first questions. Is sometimes it's it's, it's exactly that. What are the liberal arts? Um, we hear liberals, sometimes we think politics, we think art, we see arts, we think fine arts. So um, for our panelists, could you just share a little bit of information about what, what, how would you define the liberal arts and what are some majors traditionally associated under this umbrella of liberal arts? I'm just going to go first. <clears throat> I'll go. Jim? Um, I, I think of liberal arts more as a an approach to learning as opposed to a particular major, um, as opposed to a particular field. So it, it's a way of approaching your learning in providing breadth across lots of different fields, lots of different subjects to give you more perspectives and the most perspectives. It's a set of skills that you develop um, it's that gaining of perspective and, and gaining of interest and knowledge in lots of different fields. For many institutions, what falls under their college of you know, their liberal arts degrees are things like, like the visual and performing arts, uh, but also social sciences, so things like history, psychology, economics, um, the humanities, so studying different uh, cultures and parts of the world and English and philosophy uh, and also natural science and math uh, can also fall under liberal arts depending on, on the institution. So it it's less so um, a major path and more so just the tradition of learning that that institution subscribes to. And I can add to that too. It's it's not necess and I'm so glad that we're having this session too, because exactly how you introduced this, Kathy, is many students see those words liberal arts and assume it is a liberal situation or it's only studio art or or theater or something along those lines. But so I'm so excited that everybody's here tonight to recognize that it's much bigger than that. Um, those two words together. Um, it, you can't. I can't really define the liberal arts except for sharing qualities and characteristics that are typically part of a liberal arts experience. And that is the academic flexibility that students in a liberal arts program get to experience. It's the critical and creative thinking skills that they work on and establish while they're learning and growing in their liberal arts community. They're learning how to write. They're learning how to think. They're learning how to speak. Um, they're also learning adaptability and this and this ability to just pivot when things or think outside of the box, so to speak. And other characteristics of liberal arts institutions um, are typically a, a strong sense of community and, and small classes. And the majors, yes, all, all of the majors that you've heard about here tonight so far, yes. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I wanted to... Okay, go ahead, Kim. Sorry, no, I, was I was just, just going to say, yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to tag on to Tara when when you said um, it teaches you how to think. Um, I think liberal arts, yeah, instead of what to think, it's how to think. So it's a much broader base. Um, and you also mentioned Tara adaptability. I think a great example of that is how all of these professors of liberal arts were able to adapt to the virtual learning um, so quickly um, because they had to and i think they used their background in liberal arts to come up with these creative ideas and things that they could do i think that most um students 
students in liberal arts classes, um, they thrive on that small class, um, you know, uh, interaction every day. And so these professors really had to um, make that work virtually. And I think uh, many, of course, all of them have done a really good job. Mm -hmm. And Laura? I just had one thing to add coming from the parent perspective. I have friends of mine that their kids and my kids went to school together. And when they heard liberal arts, they automatically assumed that's like some hoity toity fancy school where you're not going to get a job, you know, not a real job and you won't be employable and you need to go to the university and stay stay on track and do your pre-med or your business and I just want to say to those parents out there that's absolutely not true and that you can get a great experience in fact I think it's a superior experience but I'm I'm biased because I'm a graduate of a liberal arts school seven of my nine children actually one did go to FSU so you know, I have that experience too, and it was totally different. But I just think that parents shy away from liberal arts for a lot of reasons, and I would like to encourage them to have a more open mind towards it. Great. No, thank you for your responses. I think you all did a great job capturing, yeah, what is liberal arts? And and, and it's and it's like breath and it's adaptability and flexibility. Um, another question is like, so for a student who is applying to, to college this year and does have an interest in one of those kind of traditional liberal arts major, history, humanities, et cetera, um, what are some of the things that a student can do while still in high school to prepare for, you know, having a successful, you know, however, whatever, he or she is going to study um, in college. And how do you as admissions counselors review a student's application that, that it, for a student who may indicate an interest in one of those traditional liberal arts fields? So kind of a couple of questions. What can a student be doing on their end? And then how are you looking at students who are coming in and in, in interest, uh, indicating an interest in your College of Liberal Arts and Sciences? I would say regardless of if a student is interested in a, well, we hope they are interested in, in the liberal arts by being here today, and then they'll go out and tell their friends how cool the liberal arts are. Um, but one thing that all college students, including those interested in, in exploring a liberal arts major, um, I would highly recommend that they read. If they haven't started to establish this love and this passion for reading, now is the time to get started on that. This could be your safer at home project from here on out is to read. Um, I forget the second part of your question. Reading is so important. <laughs> <laughs> Or just even how is as an admissions counselor like um, how how would you put an application because oh, yeah. i know that came up in our other conversations with how the admissions counselors will look at applications indicating for certain majors is there anything that you're looking for um for students who, who are interested in the in the liberal in the liberal arts and history philosophy yeah. english yeah, that's a good question. So for, for us specifically at Muhlenberg, um, you know, if, if a student is being, if a student indicates that they want to study biology and ultimately go to medical school, um, we might be looking for a little bit more math and science in, in that realm. Um, but we're also not bound to that because we recognize that students change their mind and they find their passions. Right now they might be Right now, somebody might be telling them what they should be studying, but once they land in a in in their classes at one of our institutions or another small liberal arts institution, they're they're going to discover something about themselves and an interest that they have that they didn't know existed before. So we are on board with students changing their mind or coming in undecided for that reason. So there's not specific things that we're looking for because we're, we're creating a community. So that holistic approach, we need, we need those artists, we need the athletes, we need the change makers, we need the volunteers, we need the, the organization, the, the people who are putting on all the fun spirit events on campus. Um, so we need, we need everybody. Yeah, I think the liberal arts students um, are, what I've seen just over the years, a lot of students who want to study a liberal arts major um, have maybe traveled as well. I mean, obviously, we're not looking for that to see if they have, but I've just noticed that 
um, the more travel, maybe a military kid or something who's traveled the world, uh, they seem to be more interested in those um, types of majors too. Our school is a little different in that we do value work. Our founder, Martha Berry, a woman back in 1902, um, realized that combining work in, in you know, sh her whole concept was educating the head, the heart, and the hands. And so she felt like it was integral to the education process. So she has you know, started out, the students started working and going to school at the same time. Now, when I say work, we may be talking two to three hours a day or five hours a week, 10 hours a week. I mean, it's not like a 40 hour a day, you know, 40 hour a week job, but we do like to see students who've worked while they've gone to college. I mean, uh, while they're in high school, it, it shows to us a little bit of you know, gumption, a little bit of on the go. And plus they're getting that different experience. I know as my kids worked, they got a real life experience that cannot be duplicated in any other way except through work. So. Yeah, and I, I think um, demonstrating an interest in, in learning, just learning. Um, you know, when we see a variety of courses or students who continue to challenge themselves and, and not take the easy path through through their high school academics, demonstrating that interest in learning more and, and interest in um, gaining new perspectives, whether, and that could be why Kim sees so many who enjoy traveling, right? Because part of liberal arts is broadening your perspective. But you can also do that being at home by reading, by working, um, so being able to demonstrate through the courses that you take throughout high school, an interest in learning and an interest in challenging yourself, even in things that you're not necessarily good at, um, is something that can be a strong indicator to especially our types of schools that you're somebody who faculty are going to enjoy interacting with. Great, no, great, great answers. Um, and actually, since work has come up, that does bring me to to another question that comes up anytime we're discussing the, the liberal arts is yeah, employability and how do those soft skills picked up, you know, through the experience in college, how does that translate into to the to the workforce? And what are what are job prospects and outlooks like for for you know students that have chosen a traditional you know liberal arts major? Could you talk to that, please? There's something I've noticed about students who go to liberal arts schools that I I don't know if they realize they do this. And I'd be interested to hear from everyone else if you've seen this too. But I'll notice when I'm around our, our students that they'll be with people that they're doing group projects with or research with or, or anything like that and talking in the, the really technical field specific terminology um, with their research partner or with their um, you know, program partner, whatever it might be. And then somebody else joins the conversation and they're able to turn around and explain what they're talking about in terms that anybody can understand. And that's not something that's easy to do. That's actually really difficult to be able to do, to have that high level of technical knowledge and still be relatable to other people. And that's something companies are looking for in employees. Because as we saw this spring, how you do your work and the type of work that needs to be done can change on a dime. And if you're the type of person who's had a wide variety of experiences in your education and worked with a wide variety of people, whether it's through actual work or just the courses you're taking, you're going to be able to do that much faster than somebody who has only been focused in their one particular lane. Um, so I think that's something to know when you're thinking about a liberal arts approach is how you're going to be as an employee in addition to what your knowledge is within that field is just as important to companies and is exactly what they're looking for when they're trying to hire somebody some technical knowledge but also the ability to continue learning and to continue adapting and changing um, and taking on new perspectives so it, i think it's still very important i, I know a couple of people mentioned 
um, postgraduate reports and, th and those things that are available through all of our institutions, it's really important to find out what the actual placement rates are and where people are going and are companies coming to that institution to recruit students. Those practicalities are super important to research and, and you should be able to find that information about any school but know that the types of skills and the types of education that you get at a liberal arts institution are going to make you very marketable regardless of what you end up choosing as your field one of my kids was a, a math major and she didn't know what she was going to do with math you know but she was good at math and so she pursued it and while she was going to Barry, she got a job with the Office of Institutional Research. She then became part of a student research team that reported to the president. Then she learned Excel. She learned things that were very marketable. She got a job. I mean, now she's in commercial real estate in Atlanta, industrial real estate. And it's like the thing she told me was, you know, Barry was one of these places that I learned how to learn, that I knew that I could do anything. If they put a problem in front of me, I was going to be able to figure it out. And that has served her so well because it gave her the confidence. Because there was a lot of times when she was a math major at Barry when she thought, I don't belong here. I, This is way over my head. This is too much, whatever. And her her professors were always like, Lydia, you're fine. You'll be fine. You'll, you know, and she gained that confidence and you know then the work experience of showing up at, you know at for eight o'clock when you didn't have to be there for an eight o'clock class but you were there to work from eight to ten you know those are these skills that you take with you that really do translate well yeah good now any anyone else i think a, a, well i know another myth of liberal arts often and hopefully nobody in the nobody none of the attendees in the room think this way um, but if they do um, sometimes a myth is that when you when students earn that liberal arts degree that they're not going to earn money but there it's been proven time and time again over a bunch of different research that the liberal arts does actually pay off the return on investment for a liberal arts degree um it it greater than any other major or any other college experience. So I think um, most recently there was a Forbes article about it in January um, talking about the payoff of a liberal arts institution. So um, that's a big myth that you're not going to earn money with liberal arts. And as Laura explained, you if you pursue something that you're most interested in, you're going to open doors to different opportunities and, and wind up doing something you may not have ever thought of, but feeling incredibly fulfilled in your life too. Yeah, yeah and I'll yeah. just add one last thing, sorry. Um, and, and, and Laura talked about this. Um, I think all companies are looking for problem solvers. And that's one thing you get with the liberal arts degree. You learn problem solving skills and those are highly valuable to any employer. Yeah, um, and, and just to kind of just to kind of jump on to to what uh, Tara was just saying, and actually it's my uh, it'll be my next slide that I'll that I'll that I'll show is um, the um, uh, Smart Colleges on Twitter has some wonderful resources. I'm gonna I'm gonna show show this on in my next slide, and I'll also include this in the link as well too for this week's um, for this week's recording but yeah i was looking through some of those those articles about how yes you how um, i think that the headline from the forbes was if you go to a liberal arts college you'll make more money and there was also a great article in us news and world report that that cited that it was a georgetown university study talking about yeah that you're not you 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 can you can be very successful um in your career um as a liberal arts major so i think that's that's reassuring for students that that may not know or you know maybe undecided or might be not sure you know what what's the best direction to go um, and then as we as we approach the top of the hour, just a couple more questions. Um, and I guess going back to um, the whole idea of, of liberal arts and the adaptability, the flexibility, the 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 ability to 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 engage in, in conversations with people from from different groups, different backgrounds. How does liberal arts 
prepare you, kind of the purpose, I think, of education in general is how does liberal arts prepare students for life or even having that exposure um, throughout their college career, whether and whether they go pre-professional and have some liberal arts classes or they're doing that traditional um, major, how can liberal arts prepare students for, for life? Students are going to get the most out of their liberal arts experience, what they put into it. And they're going to be mentored by faculty members, by other people on campus. And all of those qualities and characteristics that we've reviewed of our own institutions, of the liberal arts experience, it's it's the writing courses. It's the it, it's just being engaged in one's learning experience in the classroom, outside of the classroom, that is helping to develop those skills. Um, and just to, you know, reiterating exactly what Lauren said, like it, once they're engaged in what they're doing, they're developing these skills that employers seek and want in their employees. So there's not, I don't, it's a, it's a challenging question for, for me to answer. I know my, my colleagues on the panel will probably speak far more eloquently, but it, it truly, in the bottom line, for from my perspective, it's as long as the student is engaged in their learning experience within the liberal arts, they're coming away with those qualities and characteristics needed to adapt and, and move forward in, in their first and their eighth career choice. Critical thinking skills, critical writing skills, speaking. Yeah, I think and those if you're the, talking about life, um, you know, not just employment, but I'm a liberal arts major, and I know just just over my lifespan, which has been pretty long, um, I I can recognize that I don't make hasty decisions. Um, I think I always take a step back and look at the whole picture, the entire situation. Um, you know, I, I mean, obviously sometimes I've made mistakes and done that, but uh, I think. just having that whole broad perspective, um, you do pick up on that in situations in your life. So I think um, definitely. It's like working out, right? You're, you're burning calories while you're working out and then you stop working out and you continue to burn calories. A liberal arts degree, you're learning in your college experience and it continues giving back to you across your lifespan. You're a lifelong learner. Well, can we talk about relationships too? Because to me, when you're in a liberal arts college, the things you remember most, and y'all are all liberal arts graduates, I think, but the thing we remember the most are the relationships, the people who impacted our lives, the people that we came in contact with, whether it was the custodian or my my guy that was my, my boss when I was a, a worker, a student worker, or the professor that 20 years later could still remember my name. The people that I see, I go back every couple of years and I'm, I'm like bonded with these people in a way because you're living in this community and you're serving one another and you're working with one another and you're just, it's like no other bond. It is like no other bond. And that's why I wanted that for all my kids. If I could have, I would have, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it was so fantastic. And I, I am one of five kids and three of my siblings went to uh, universities and two of us went to liberal arts schools. The, I'm the only one that is like still related. I, I still see all my friends. Whereas the ones that went to UF or FSU and whatnot, they don't really keep in touch with their friends. I mean, I'm not saying that that's for everybody, but when you go to this small liberal arts college, you've got this like band of brothers and these friends that are like your people for life that have your back, that that you can call for anything. And it's just a, it's a great gift. That's all I'm gonna say. When I think a lot of that, Laura, is because there's also so much learning that happens outside of the classroom. And that's something that liberal arts colleges recognize is that it's not just sitting in a classroom at a desk where you do all of your learning. Right. It's probably where you do a small portion of the learning. 
it's also in the study groups it's in the residence halls it's learning to be independent it's in random situations that you find yourself in with friends um, it's when you're studying abroad and have to navigate a country where you don't speak the language it's liberal arts colleges recognize that there are so many ways to learn and styles of learning that you end up being so bonded to these people because you're learning all the time and, and sometimes without realizing it too. Great. No, wonderful, wonderful answers. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I want to, as we as we get to the, the the close of our session, I just wanted to close with a, a question for each of you. And I'll go in reverse order. So I'll start with uh, with Kim this time. Um, is as we move into the um, the fall application cycle, applications are opening up, or if, if they haven't already, um, what advice do you have for rising seniors and their families as they get ready to start applying to colleges? What's some advice that you could that you could give to students and their families? And I'll start with uh, Kim, please. Um, I guess for for right now, just you know. The common application opens August 1st. I think summer is a great time to start narrowing down your choices. Um, once school starts back, things are going to be a little bit crazy, more crazy than usual this year um, with between the virtual and the who knows what's happening, um, especially here in Florida. So I think now is a great time to just narrow down those choices and take those virtual tours and um, just just kind of start making your lists and seeing where you might really want to apply. Um, I think a lot of the deadlines have moved back a little bit, some have. Um, so just check all those things out, but now's a great time to be doing that. I know everybody's tired of virtual, but um, I think once school starts back, you're gonna find that you don't have a lot of time. Thank you, Tara. Yes, thank you. And I will I will get you out of the virtual space. And I my piece of advice is to actually sit down and be thoughtful and honest with yourself and have these thoughtful and honest conversations with your family. And for the parents in the room, please don't let college be the driving conversation at your dinner table every single night of the week. Consider as a family setting aside an hour or so a week and parents, this is really tough for you, but this is the only question you ask. How's it going and how can I help you? That's it. <laughs> Let your student drive this journey and recognize that the characteristics and qualities that they've identified and, and what makes them the best self in, in their community and who they are right now, identifying those in the colleges that they're looking for so your your child and the students in the room you can be your best self so sit really think about yourself and be honest and have these conversations with your family particularly financial fit social fit and academic fit you obviously have support from your family and score at the top to help you balance your list to make sure you'll have multiple choices when when college decisions come in what's most important is you're choosing where you want to go and graduate from and there's more than one out there for you so just be honest and hug your hug your family <laughs> thank you lauren i would i would say to to not forget that as important as college is and i think setting a limit on how often you talk about it is, is a great a great piece um to also remember to continue engaging in your high school and and I know it, it's going to look different potentially depending on where you go to school and, and it did look different in the spring but continue engaging in the things that bring you joy that make you curious that that interest you because that's what you're going to tell colleges about and if you stop what are you going to tell us about um and to remember that as much as the current situation current environment has shaped our lives that it, it's one part um, so don't forget about all the wonderful experiences that you have had um, make sure that those are included in your application as well don't minimize how COVID has impacted you definitely share that with us but we want to hear about all of the other pieces of your life too and your other experiences so continue engaging continue reflecting on what matters to you, what makes you curious, 
um, and what brings you joy and, and then share that with us when the time comes. Great, right, thank you. And Laura, please. I'm, I'm also coming, this, coming to this from the perspective of a parent. I remember what it was like when my first child was going to college and I immediately felt like I was behind. I didn't know enough. I, I'm gonna, I've done something that will, she won't get to where she needs to be because of something I did not do. Take a deep breath, parents. It is really gonna be okay and it really will be. I, I do think that, don't forget about us. We are really, even it doesn't matter what college you choose we're admissions counselors and we've been through this and we really can give you good advice it doesn't matter whether you go to our school or not it's advice about college and and if there's a college that you're thinking of reach out to that person but also reach out to those other parents those other parents that you see their kids have had a positive good experience at college find out what was good what they did what they didn't do um begin early august 1st the the applications start and the earlier you start applying the more time you have to find those scholarships all the kind of financial pieces that you want to put together if you start early you are going to be on top of the game and and believe me you can get you can find out everything you need to know it's not like you need to be have studied this for the last five years to be able to help your child, okay? And the kids are good. They're going to be just fine. Everybody's going to be fine. That's what I have to say. Go get them. <laughs> All right. That's not even the hardest head. pill to swallow, Laura. Like everything's going to be fine. <laughs> but really, I promise. <laughs> yes. Oh wow. Well, great advice. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, th thank you so much. Um, and just to quick show our audience, um, if you want for all things liberal arts on Twitter at Smart Colleges, it's a wonderful feed. I spent a few hours on it last night and this morning. It is fantastic. Uh, so do go check that out. Um, and then we're actually well, we're wrapping up our, our webinar series with FRAC with tonight's presentation. So again, I want to thank my panelists uh, for sharing their wisdom, insight, great advice. Um, with all of us and throughout this entire month of July. I have enjoyed hosting this series so much and I have learned a lot both on the counseling side and also on the um, parent, parent side as well too. Um, and so to everyone, um, thank you very much for attending tonight. Please be safe, be healthy, be kind to each other and enjoy the rest of your summer and have a good, good, have a good, good night. Thank you. Kathy, just wanted to add one thing real quick uh, and thanking everybody for coming tonight. Uh, we have our next webinar series uh, starting next month. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing a whole series on mental health and uh, how to stay sane in your house while you are vir virtual schooling. Um, so we'll be doing a weekly webinar uh somewhat of this they're going to be during the day uh but we will be recording them all so people can watch after the fact and you can see all the details for that at scorewebinar.com so thank you very much i hope everyone has a great night and thank you to all of our panelists tonight we really appreciate your participation stay safe and stay healthy everybody bye good night